pure gold never tarnishes under any circumstances. Whatever external factors may be, they will not affect the luster of this noble metal. The same principle distinguishes a true boxing star from a fake. Both will shine equally in the light of triumph, but only true legends will retain their luster after total defeats and severe disappointments. Our story is about a genuine star whose value is beyond question. Oscar de la Hoya, aka the Golden Boy, or as they say in Spanish, El Nino de Oro, the icon of millions, boxing idol. With his radiant smile, he outshone Hollywood stars and changed the faces of his opponents into a bloody mask. Presenting the former junior lightweight world champion, the former lightweight world champion, the former super lightweight world champion, and reigning, defending, and undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, El Nino de Oro. February 4, 1973, in Montebello, East Los Angeles, was born the future boxing superstar. Unlike most other sports heroes, on the boxing ring, Oscar led not poverty and especially not the desire to fight. Oscar de la Hoya grew up a peace-loving child who dreamed of a completely different life. He was interested in baseball and music. First, I just. I resented the sport. I just could not deal with boxing because it was such a brutal sport. Getting hit and crying and I just couldn't take it. But my father was a very strict father. So I had no choice but to go to the gym every single day because of him taking me to the gym. And after several months, after years, I learned to love the sport. The passion for sports was a family tradition. His grandfather, father, older brother, they all boxed and had some success in the ring, and it was Joel that his father saw as the future champion. Oscar was not promising in his father's opinion. Nevertheless, fate had its own way. Numerous victories made Oscar de la Hoya a star already in the amateur ring, but the guy had a special motivation for such early achievements. His biggest fan was his mom, who made great sacrifices just to support her son. Cecilia Gonzalez was a cancer patient. In 1990, she skipped treatment to be by Oscar's side and see him triumph at the Goodwill Games Tournament. She died the same year. Being a loving mother, she wanted to see her son win the most prestigious amateur tournament. Two years later, at the Olympic Tournament in Barcelona, 19-year-old Oscar destroyed all opponents on his way to the coveted gold medal. This victory, of course, he dedicated to his mom. With the exception of the final day of the box off in Phoenix, a lot of times De La Hoya has looked like a fighter. Oh, wow. Silva, a left hand, puts him down. Must fight again and again to win that gold medal. De La Hoya is trying to put some pressure on. Big Scores with the left, to the box, to the head, Oscar De La Hoya. It's that minute 20 that's so crucial. Remember, oh, oh perfect. Journalists were so impressed with his family story, so they called him the Golden Boy. In fact, they gave a frantic boost to the promotion of the future boxing legend. After reaching the top of the amateur, De La Hoya moved up to the pros. In November 1992, he crushed Lamar Williams in his debut. Williams was knocked down three times before the referees stopped the fight. For a fairly easy job, the Golden Boy made $200,000. It was a lot of money for a rookie, especially at that time. The road to his first title was also short. 
Two years later, Oscar captured the WBO Super Featherweight belt. Jimmy Brendahl lasted until the 10th round, but it was not a big obstacle for the new world champion. Over the next two years, Oscar had nine fights and conquered the second division. He defeated such notable boxers as Jorge Paez, Gennaro Hernandez, and Jesse James Leja. By that point, De La Hoya had grown up in every sense, as a fighter and as a personality. The Golden Boy's popularity was already high, but now he was like an eyesore. It was impossible to ignore Becoming the new face of boxing, Oscar incurred the wrath of vindictive Mexican fans. And no matter how he emphasized his Latino origin, he was rather hated in Mexico. The fact is that the golden boy never fit the standards of Latin brutality. Their stereotypical boxer is supposed to be bloody, brutal, and generally be like a character from the works of Jack London. By contrast, in the States, he has become the new boxing icon. Even such stars as Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. could envy the hype hovering around the golden boy. And it's all thanks to his charm. Oscar is the first fighter who managed to attract a huge female audience to boxing matches. In 1997, Oscar was on the hunt for boxing stars. He was determined to conquer the 4th Division and faced the legendary defensive master, Pernell Whitaker. De La Hoya's next target was the charismatic Macho Hector Camacho. The Puerto Rican was the only fighter capable of getting Oscar's fans on his side. The weigh-in ceremony turned into a male beauty contest. Pay attention that the vast majority of the spectators were girls. And that's in such a brutal sport as boxing. It is even crazier on the fight day. The Thomas and Max Center Arena was a riot. However, all Camacho showed was dance. In, in September 1998, Nothing prevented a rematch between Julio Cesar Chavez and Oscar De La Hoya. The Golden Boy held the WBC belt in welterweight. The famous Mexican reached the desire mark of 100 victories, but was already in the decline. Nevertheless, the hype was fantastic. The beginning of the rematch was similar to the first fight. Julio was retreating. Oscar was slowly pressing. But in the second round, the champion gave hope to Chavez's fans. From that point on, the real fight began. De La Hoya had the advantage in the exchanges. But in any case, he was taking risks which meant that Julio still had a chance. Emotions were running high for both, and that made the fight dramatic. Julio didn't forget to use dirty punches. The rematch was exciting and more competitive than the first match. In the fifth round, a stunning exchange was accompanied by applause from the crowd. In the second half of the fight, Chavez went for an escalation, which didn't bring the result. Oscar once again mauled the face of the Mexican legend, ending the fight with a spectacular combination. Sometimes susceptible on that side of the 
Chavez's corner stopped the fight, and it was a logical end to their great confrontation. After Oscar had dealt with all the legends, it was the turn of his contemporaries. The first man to actually challenge the Golden Boy was Ike Quarty, a boxer from Ghana, a grand master of the ring, and also an undefeated boxer. And Quarty's jab flew out faster than Oscar blinked. What to do with him, how to parry his jab, how to remove his block. For the first time in his career, he couldn't do anything. But they say diligence is the mother of success. In the sixth round, Oscar cooled down the cocky Ghanaian. But he didn't take the tent in the final round. De La Hoya himself became the creator of this miracle. And down goes Corte on a classic De La Hoya. In 1999, one of the greatest confrontations in boxing history took place. Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Trinidad was dubbed the fight of the millennium. Two of the best boxers in the world at that time. The public was expecting an uncompromising, tooth-crunching battle, but it turned out to be something different. Oscar won eight rounds and was so convinced of victory that the rest of the fight turned into a running contest. The golden boy was running backwards and much faster than Trinidad. The judges didn't appreciate it, despite the fact that Tito never caught up with Oscar. For the winner by majority decision, De Puerto Rico! But no kidding, the fight was great despite the lack of blood and brutality. It was a high-class, stylistic battle. De La Hoya's dominance was clear. But in this chess game, he outplayed himself. A tactical error cost him the greatest victory. A nice bonus for the loser was a fantastic feat. In 36 minutes, Oscar became richer by $41 million. Trinidad earned a little less. 28.5 million. At the time, these were astronomical figures. And while fan expectations were not met, time has set the record straight. This fight is of the highest historical value for the boxing industry. It is said that a talented man is talented in everything. De La Hoya is exactly like that. He has always been passionate about music, and in the early 2000s, he released a solo album with Spanish and English songs. If it weren't for boxing, he would probably be a competitor to Enrique Iglesias. But boxing literally took its toll. The first defeat left a bitter mark in the soul of the golden boy but it did not affect his ambitions. When Trinidad moved up another weight class, the WBC belt vacated, so De La Hoya was reinstated as champion. At the very beginning of the new millennium, Oscar had another principal opponent. Sugar Shane Mosley was one of the few who beat De La Hoya in the amateurs, and he did it twice. But in the pros, Oscar quickly built up an iconic reputation. In February 2000, boxers packed the Staples Center Arena in Los Angeles. The event was of such great interest that even Muhammad Ali came to watch it. And this time, not a single spectator was disappointed. Oscar didn't want to repeat his mistakes, so in this fight, he returned to offensive action. Good for him, 
chain was inferior in size and physical power. However, the champion faced another problem – speed. Previously, it had been Oscar's main advantage in every fight. But not this time. Mostly acted on instinct. He changed his stance. Or he exploded. Somewhere, subconsciously, Golden Boy was unsure of his own actions. And at the end of an exciting 12 rounds, Shane mostly won by split decision. Oscar got a second strike on his ambitions and his ego. For any super champion, two defeats in a short period of time is actually a death sentence. Career goes down, and the fighter turns into a downed pilot. But as we have already said, Oscar De La Hoya is an outstanding personality for whom such laws don't work. In 2001, the Golden Boy faced another people's champion, Arturo Gotti. Two big names already guaranteed fireworks, but Arturo didn't have a chance against the gifted and skillful Oscar. He was beaten, battered, and destroyed. Javier Castillejo, who was famous at that time, got a good whipping too. De La Hoya beat him with great enthusiasm. Becoming a six-time world champion in five weight classes, Oscar came close to one of the most important fights of his professional career. In September 2002, he came out for a super welterweight unification fight against another champion, Fernando Vargas. The initiative was constantly slipping from one to the other. It was hard to predict how it would end. Little beaten, and at the same time satisfied, was shining with happiness. For the first time in a long while, the fighter was enjoying what was happening in the ring. This day, De La Hoya had one of the best performances of his career and became the unified super welterweight champion. 2002 was a fruitful year for Oscar in every sense. He returned to the boxing top and also created his own project, together with former banker and manager Richard Schaefer. They founded the Golden Boy Promotions, which eventually became one of the most influential in this business. In May 2003, Oscar made a title defense against Yori Boy Campus. This was an easy job. Oscar beat him as much as he could and won by technical knockout in the seventh round. In September 2003, De La Hoya again shared the ring with his old buddy Shane Mosley. This time, they fought in the Super Welter. It's amazing how boxers have changed from the outside. Three years ago, in the welterweight division, Oscar seemed like a giant. Now, the athletic Shane looked much bigger than the Golden Boy. The tactical revenge was also different. The strong Mosley was now on the offensive, and Oscar was countering. 
and already in the first round, he understood that this evening he had better not blink. A very competitive, intense, and even epic confrontation went the whole distance. Mostly was acting tougher with each round, and Oscar was unable to impose his game. De La Hoya suffered his third defeat and lost his titles. The loss to Sugar Shane opened a string of bad luck. 2004 was the most disappointing year of Oscar's career. In June, the Golden Boy attempted a six-division conquest. He moved up to middleweight to face undefeated champion Felix Sturm of Germany. The fight was held in Las Vegas. Literally every attack of the Golden Boy, the Hall perceived as something unprecedented. If you listen only to the emotions of the spectators, it would create the impression that Felix is about to drop. That's how wildly the Oscar fans were. The problem was that all of the strikes of their favorite crashed on the armor of the German boxer. Hoya himself was getting accurate punches. During the breaks in Oscar's corner, a sepulchral silence reigned. The boxer's sad look spoke volumes about the fact that he was losing. Before this fight, De La Hoya signed a contract for a super fight with Bernard Hopkins, who was watching from the locker room. So Oscar couldn't lose anyway, which is basically what happened. The golden boy lost by winning. Those are the only words that fit this horrific decision. Oscar became the champion already in six divisions but he realized that it was just a gift. In September 2004, Oscar De La Hoya and Hopkins faced off for the battle of the first undisputed champion in the four belt history. Experts dubbed the showdown the fight of the decade. Analysts thought De La Hoya had no chance against the best middleweight in the world, but his already difficult situation was made worse by an injury to his right hand. So, in the fight, he could rely only on his famous left hook. Over the course of the fight, it was becoming clear that Oscar had bitten off more than he could chew. Hopkins' game plan was working almost perfectly. Bernard kept his rhythm. He was hitting a right cross and moving away from distance. De La Hoya was never able to land a good combination. But in the tenth round, things happened that no one could have predicted. A shock for Oscar, a shock for his fans. Now the public saw the problems that Oscar faced in his daily life. While he was on top, no one noticed anything and everyone literally prayed for him. But when he fell down, the gossip and condemnation began. Since the late 90s, Oscar has been getting into trouble related to women. His crazy groupies, or rather those who hid under that image, wanted money. Big money, which De La Hoya makes at every turn. Not getting what they wanted, they were accusing him of raping. An old, tired trick that many celebrities and athletes, including Mike Tyson, have fallen for. And it continues to this day. Throughout his life, more than a dozen lawsuits have been filed against Oscar. But most of those who want to get their hands on the Golden Boy's wealth are left with nothing. His lawyers crack these cases like peanuts, but still one person was able to put one over on him. In 2006, Oscar visited an upscale strip club in Manhattan. At the time, the fighter had no clue that he was steeped in real trouble. Milana Dravnell had unpleasant dirt on the boxer and blackmailed him for money. As a result, the embarrassing photos spread all over the world and Oscar had to shell out $20 million to close the lawsuit. It should be said that the real fans of the Golden Boy don't care about what kind of personal life he has, because it doesn't affect his boxing skills. But the fact about the serious drug addiction of the champion really upset many fans. 
only in 2011 the athlete publicly admitted that he was struggling with drug and alcohol addiction. But until then, he still had a long road ahead of him, filled with loud victories and hurtful defeats. In May 2006, the Golden Boy returned to the ring after a 20-month absence. His comeback was triumphant and inspiring. His opponent was not a timid one. The scandalous Ricardo Mayorga was at that time considered the main creator of upsets. No matter who boxed with him, everyone had a hard time. However, Oscar, like a bull, stomped the matador. De La Hoya's fans had a good reason for celebration and applause. Having won countless awards and writing his name in boxing history, Oscar thought about retirement. As an experienced businessman, he realized that he needed a worthy opponent who would allow him to hit the jackpot and retire with a calm soul and a beautiful check. Such a man could be Floyd Mayweather, the leader of Pound for Pound and the new pay-per-view star. Pretty Boy left the top-ranked company that kept him on a fixed salary. De La Hoya had gone the same way. Although the fighters were antagonists, the goal of becoming the richest athletes in the world united them. At the press tour, Oscar didn't work hard at all. He was the A-side, and all the dirty work of promoting the mega fight fell on Mayweather's shoulders. However, Pretty Boy got a benefit that De La Hoya didn't even realize. We can talk about the De La Hoya Mayweather fight for a long time and even create a special release. After all, the fight was really beautiful, competitive, and thought out to the smallest detail. But Floyd's advantage, which Oscar didn't know about, is what kept Golden Boy from winning. He let Pretty Boy inside his head. Instead of a tactical plan, De La Hoya was wasting his strength. As a result, Mayweather won by split decision. Thus, there was another generational change. Oscar officially ended his reign on the Boxing Olympus. However, the Golden Boy could not resist the temptation to take part in another match. For the fight with Manny Pacquiao, he went down to welterweight, in which he hasn't boxed since 2001. Pac-Man had not yet moved above lightweight and was an underdog. From Oscar's side, such a step can be called a big gamble. Because then, Philippine Storm swept away everyone. And De La Hoya, after total drying, looked more like a mummy than a great champion. This was reflected in the course of the confrontation. Oscar could barely move his feet and hardly had time to react to the lightning-fast displacements of Pacquiao. The result, which was considered an upset, is now perceived as a pattern. It was the epilogue of a truly legendary career and many great champions, but it was time to pass the baton to his heirs. After his defeat to Manny Pacquiao, De La Hoya retired and focused on promotional business. In this field, he achieved no less impressive results. Oscar raised several generations of champions. Now other talents are following in his path, but as mentioned, only in the shadow of defeat is true gold defined. Oscar has passed that test. Throughout his career, the Golden Boy collected awards, conquered peaks and set records. Oscar De La Hoya is a boxer of rare breed, whose popularity has gone far beyond his native sport. This is a man with his own unique style, both in the ring and in life. What about defeats and scandals? Yeah, there are failures, as with any man. All these troubles look nothing more than dust on gold, which needs to be periodically wiped off.